I got wrapped up pretty tight, you know, from like, you know, coming around the corner and basically being like bear hugged and being on the roof and not wanting to go tumble off because there's no ledge. I just put my blade to work. I mean, this is on the beginning of the assault. This is me right when I got on the roof. Have you ever had to utilize any of the systems that you've developed as far as hand-to-hand -hand in combat? A hundred percent. Yeah, multiple times. Can multiple you give times. us a scenario? Uh, there was one on a rooftop where I had my gun out and I got wrapped up pretty tight, you know, from like, you know, coming around the corner and basically being like bear hugged and being on the roof and not wanting to go tumble off because there's no ledge. I just put my blade to work. And, uh, you know, that's one scenario. Um, there's one where I was just kinda, blade, no pistol, no pistol. Um, there was one where I was on a rooftop and I had my gun aside cause I was trying to cuff the dude and he was fighting for his life swinging at me and I had all my gear on. Um, so a lot of the cuffing techniques that I learned uh, through Gustavo actually came into fruition where, you know, I was able to cross arm him, roll him over, his wife sitting next to me, you know, smacking me in the head, yelling at me. I mean, she wasn't like being super aggressive. It wasn't anything that concerned me, but I uh, was able to choke him out, put him to sleep very calmly, then put him in handcuffs. Um, I mean, I have a long list. Let's go back to the first one that you mentioned. If that's the first one that came to mind, then obviously you have a, a good memory of what happened. Can you elaborate on it? Yeah, just just the standpoint. And again, I don't want to be, you know, I don't know what the right word is, too graphic or whatever. But the one thing I'll say is that blades take longer to use than we think they do. You know, that's why we talk about timers and switches. Um, when I started to utilize my blade in those scenarios where... Can you explain timers and switches to the audience? So timers are anything that's going to bleed you out, anything that hits a major artery. You know, when your fight response is kicked in, you're going to have different things in your body that essentially um, close down or not. I mean, sometimes somebody can get a femoral cut and it won't even bleed because your adrenaline's pumping and it retracts. So it's always kind of an unknown. Um, but the loss of blood essentially is a timer, you know, and, and again, just emphasizing the the scenarios of these of, of why I applied different things was the context of the situation, the accessibility of these things. You know, if I'm wrapped up here and I can't use utilize my gun, and the closest thing I have from falling off the roof is to be able to pull my blade out and and get it to work, that's something that's gonna mitigate me going off the roof or anybody else. And now at that point, I'm looking to end the fight, mitigate the fight de-escalate this and, and move on to another part. I mean, this is on the beginning of the assault. This is me right when I got on the roof. Um, and so a switch, that's a timer where I'm looking for things that, that are going to slow you down and shut you down, but they take time. A switch is something that has an immediate effect. It's like a light switch. So a good example is a nerve bundle. Everybody can go like this right here to their shoulder and push in right there. There's a switch right there. So if I am able to attack that switch, I can literally shut your whole arm down and make it numb. And it does not take much pressure to do that. If your finger's right here and you just feel that, like, you know what I'm talking about, the nerve bundle right there? Yeah. Like, it does not take much to go click, and then your whole arm's done. That's a switch. So you have switches like that all throughout your body, and you have timers like that all throughout your body if you understand, you know, where your blood's running and everything else. So the context is really going to depend on how and when I use what, you know? So... Yeah, I've got a lot of scenarios that I've been through. I just so you go up the rooftop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're on the roof, and that's it. I mean, uh, I think Eddie was somewhere on the right side of me, and just taking this guy down to the ground because that's what it ended up turning into is like a ground scuffle. Um, you know, at that point, my main concern is: is this guy going to continue to be a threat and affect anybody else that's moving? or moving past us. So ultimately just making sure that that didn't happen, you know? How precision, how much precision is involved in blade work? I mean, is it like I, shot placement? I, yeah, I equated exactly like that, shot placement. When we're doing blade draws and if I have a target up, 
Um, I'll put a head up, I'll put a two by four up if I'm doing live blade training. Um, it's the same thing, aim small, miss small. So if I'm going for an ocular shot or I'm going for a body shot specifically, like I have to have precision in that. So there is a level of being dynamic. Same thing when we shoot and move, you need to be able to draw your blade and hit and move. Um, I think precision is something that probably goes under talked about, but it was exactly like what you're aiming at. And so the thing that gets dynamic about blade work is you could be upside down and backwards because you got a dude that's on top of you or you're in a jujitsu scenario. And it's similar with a pistol too, but the, the pistol is one directional in a sense of like, there's only one way one bullet can come at you in a straight line. And so that, that just knowing that itself gives you a, a level of empowerment when you're actually in a fight, but a blade is very multi-directional in the sense of like, it can forward cut, it can back cut, the point's sharp. Um, is it going forward or backward? I mean, just doing this is gonna cut you as opposed to like, if I point the gun right here and just do this, well, nothing happens because I'm not pointing it at you, you know? That is the level of effect that you can have with the blade as opposed to the pistol. And so I think the dynamic there is really important, but precision is absolutely key. Knowing where timers are, knowing where switches are. And again, I, I say all this stuff and, and I know sometimes it's tough for me to articulate some of this because I always approach it from a standpoint of self-defense. I want everybody to know that, that it, it is all about de-escalating and avoiding these scenarios right from the very beginning. I don't want to have to use my blade if I don't have to. I don't want to have to use my pistol if I don't have to. If I'm using them, it's because my life is on the line or somebody else's life is on the line and I'm trying to get out of there. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not doing it overtly to just get a rep in. I, I want to do it in a way and I want to understand that level of violence. So if they really need it, I can recall that in the moment that I need it most. You know, just wanted to say that because, you know, some people get wrapped up and they don't understand the, yep. the, the full breadth of, you know, what combatives and what blade work really exists for, you know? Well, thank you for elaborating. When it came to, when you've had to utilize hand-to-hand -hand stuff, I mean, that's that's obviously very up close, very personal. How did, I mean, how would that, how does that affect you versus killing with your with your firearm, with your rifle, with your sniper rifle, with your pistol? versus a blade? Well, I think we're putting our hands on people more than we ever have before, um, or may maybe not traditionally, but I think from a warfare standpoint, they both are important to understand. And yes, is putting your hands on somebody more intimate in a sense than just pulling the trigger and not really seeing what's going on there? Um, I do think that there's a contrast. I think you have more to learn this is my point. I think you have more to learn from the combative scenario than you do pulling the trigger necessarily. Because in a vacuum, like if I have a target and it's it's moving, I'm like, okay, now, and it's not a threat anymore. The hand-to-hand -hand stuff is just much more dynamic in the sense of your balance, your weight, shifting, the right tool to use, how you're using it, the bullet will stop somebody in their tracks when combatives isn't necessarily that right away. Um, if I choke somebody out, that's probably one of the easiest and fastest ways to get somebody to become compliant and have the, the result that I want. But that doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to be able to access that tool right away. He may be fighting for his life, mm -hmm. you know, and backing up in a corner or trying to hit me with something else, or there might be multiple people. So it gets extremely dynamic. So when I say there's a lot to learn, more from combatives is because there's just so many different variables. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.